In these examples, we're told to evaluate the following, and that means find a value. So find a number. This is going to be equal to a number. All of these are going to be equal to a number, and we want to find that number. We want to evaluate each of these expressions. The thing to note here is that the absolute value symbols act as grouping symbols. That is, they behave in a manner not just like the absolute value signs, but also like the parentheses. In other words, whatever is inside an absolute value symbol, we have to do first. So down here in this example, we need to compute this 12 minus 5 and take the absolute value there before we do this subtraction. This is as if we had parentheses here in addition to the absolute value sign. The absolute value sign acts as a grouping symbol. So let's start here and do the first one. We do 6 minus 2 is 4 and then we take the absolute value of that. So I'm going to do this in steps. I'm going to replace the 6 minus 2 with a 4. So instead of having the absolute value of 6 minus 2, I have the absolute value of 4. And that's obviously equal to 4. Okay, in this next example on the right here, the absolute value of 5 plus the absolute value of negative 5. I'm going to rewrite this removing the absolute value sign. So I'll evaluate this and then that, and then I'll add them together. So this, the absolute value of 5, is simply 5, and I still have my plus sign. And then this, the absolute value of negative 5, is also 5. So I get 5 plus 5, and that's 10. Okay, this example here, I have 12 minus 5 inside my absolute value sign. So I do that first. And I'm going to rewrite this whole expression. But instead of 12 minus 5, I can do that. 12 minus 5 is 7. And so I have the absolute value of 7, which is simply 7. And then I still have this minus 2. So it's 7 minus 2, and that's equal to 5. In this example, I have 3 plus 4 minus 7. Now, don't just do the 3 plus 4 left to right, because we have to do what's inside the absolute value sign first. Remember, the absolute value signs act as a grouping symbol. So I have to write this as 3 plus whatever this is. And 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So I have 3 plus the absolute value of negative 3. And that's equal to 3 plus 3. I've rewritten it again. I've just replaced the absolute value of negative 3 with 3. And then you can see that 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. And one more example here. The absolute value of 6 minus 9 minus the absolute value of 2 minus 7. I'll do this in a few steps. I'm going to rewrite the entire problem, but I'm going to do this computation and that computation. So I have the absolute value of, instead of this, instead of 6 minus 9, I'm going to do that. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. So I have the absolute value of negative 3 minus the absolute value of this, 2 minus 7. And I'll replace 2 minus 7 with negative 5. So this expression is equivalent to the original expression. I've just replaced the 6 minus 9 with the negative 3, and I've replaced the 2 minus 7 with the negative 5. Now I'm going to take this and rewrite it again. But this time I'm going to perform the absolute value operation and remove those absolute value signs. So think about this, the absolute value of negative 3. That is 3. And then I have a minus, and then I have this, the absolute value of negative 5. And that is 5. So the original problem is equivalent to this, 3 minus 5. And 3 minus 5, you might be able to see, is negative 2.